Today's lecture is on insurance and billing. Basic insurance terminology. The language of insurance. Premium. This is an insurance plan paid for by the policyholder, you or me. Benefits are the payments for the medical services. Dependents are spouse or children of the insured or the policyholder. The third party payer is the health plan. Deductible is a fixed yearly payment or a fixed yearly amount that must be paid by the policyholder before the insurance plan will start to pay out benefits. Coinsurance is a percent owed after the deductible has been met. So if your deductible is $1,000 a year for you and you've met this by the third month of the year, now your coinsurance says of the amount that is now being charged for your office visit, say it's $100, your coinsurance is 20% of every type of service you have. So if the office visit is $100, your coinsurance is 20 and you will pay that for the visit. Now a copayment is different. A copayment is a set fee at the time of a visit. Most copayments today are between $25 and $50 per visit. It's usually paid at the beginning of the visit. An elective procedure is a planned procedure. All right, if you need to go in and have um, surgery for anything special. Pre-certification or pre-authorization means that the physician who has requested the service, say you're going in for an operation, that has to go in and prove that the um, procedure is necessary with documentation. Private health plans have fee schedules and charges. All right, and what is a fee schedule? A fee schedule is a list of the usual charges that a physician will um, have to make. All right, it's called a fee schedule. And fee for service and managed care plans. We have fee for service plans. And what this fee for service does is it pays the physician a set amount for managed care. So you have the ABC managed care health plan, the HMO. And their fee for service says, every time you walk in for a blood pressure check, blood pressure check we're only going to pay $15. That's fee for service. Capitation, you have a specific amount that can be paid out on your plan through your lifetime. Once that is reached, then the managed care plan or the HMO can release you from their insurance. Preferred provider organizations are one type of ins um, insurance coverage. And these are, uh, you're going to pay a little bit more for this policy, but you get to pick the doctor you want. Health maintenance organizations are the lesser expensive ones, and you choose a doctor from the many in the plan. Commercial payers, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Um, United Healthcare is another one. Private commercial carriers carry liability insurance and disability insurance as well as health insurance. Now, health insurance started out and the first health insurance policies came from life insurance companies. All right, Blue Cross Blue Shield was created as a health insurance company. But Aetna used to have um, life insurance and they got into the health insurance game back in the beginning of all the health insurance um, policies that were being written. And they carry liability insurance and disability insurance. All right. Patient-centered medical home has come about since the Obama plan, Obamacare plan. It is comprehensive care. The patient is the centered and the manager of their care. It calls for accessible services for all needs, and it constantly checks on quality and safety issues to make sure the patient is getting the best possible care in the safe environment. And comprehensive care means that the, the, your care team can be your physician, your physical therapist, your pharmacist, uh, so and your orthopedic surgeon if you broke a knee. So it's not just your primary care physician, but it is all of the healthcare people giving you care to get you back into um, the best care you can have, the best health you can have. Government plans include Medicare. There are four parts to Medicare. Please remember these and give examples of them. Medicare Part A coverage is for inpatient care. 
It is for skilled nursing facilities, known as rehab centers or nursing homes. It is for home health care. It also covers hospice care for end of life. It covers some mental health services and limited respite services. So if you are taking care of a loved one at home and it is a 24-7 thing or there's only two of you doing it, you can ask for a respite service where your family member will be sent to a nursing home for three or four days so you can have some time off. Medicare Part B coverage. Now, everyone, when you turn 65, gets Medicare Part A automatically. The rest of the coverages you have to pay for and apply for. So Medicare Part B coverage is for all outpatient procedures and supplies. Again, it is a voluntary program. Medicare Part C is managed care options. And Medicare Part B is basic health, is basic insurance for your health. Two things that Medicare Part B do not cover are routine dental cleanings and eye examinations. Medicare Part C has to manage care options, including PPOs, HMOs, and private fee-for-service options, and they do include dental hygiene or teeth cleaning twice a year and eye exams, and you do pay a little bit more for them, and there's a lot of different um, suppliers of this type of managed care. Medicare Part D is a excuse me, prescription drug plan. You can, you can apply to it and use it or not. You do not have to. And the Recovery Audit Contractor Program is designed to prevent waste, fraud, and abuse in Medicare. It's a huge program, and that's one reason that Medicare may come into your office and audit. Medicaid is um, accepting assignment, and Medicaid is through the federal government for people with low income and no income. And for Medicare people who cannot afford a supplemental insurance, they may be able to get Medicaid to pick up the balances. Now, one of the things about Medicaid and all these supplemental insurances after Medicare is if Medicare doesn't cover the cost, like Medicare Part B doesn't cover health um, oral hygiene, neither will your supplement insurance or Medicaid. Accepting assignments, it is up to the state to decide if you're eligible. You can have dual coverage of Medicare and Medicaid patients, as I said, and there are state guidelines. And to verify eligibility, every visit is one of the state guidelines. So they're going to ask you for your license, your state ID, and your card, and they're going to run it through that little machine, looks like a little black sausage, and it will tell them whether you're um, active and valid or denied. And authorization is needed unless it's an emergency. There are time limits exist for claim submission. You only have so many days to submit a bill to Medicaid as well as Medicare, and you must treat patients with professionalism no matter what type of insurance they have. TRICARE and CHAMP VA. Now, these are for our military, whether they're active or retired. Um, we have um, PRIME, Extra, and Standard TRICARE and CHAMP VA. So PRIME is an HMO, Extra is a PPO, and you understand the difference, and now Standard is fee-for-service. So there are different types of military um, in, insurance plans for our active and our um, retired, and also for dependents of military that have passed away. We have the state children's health insurance plan, and we call this um, SHIPS or CHIPS, depending on how long you've been in the health insurance business. It was enacted in 19. And it was reacted in 2009. And what it and it was reacted in 2009 is the CHIP plan, Children's Health Insurance Plan, and it guarantees children health insurance from the age of 17, from birth to 17, no matter what the income these children will get health insurance. We have other kinds of insurance called workers' compensation, which is governed by federal laws and then by a set of state laws for anyone who is hurt on the job and the injury is proven to have been received due to the work the workplace. Now we have payer payment systems. We have resource-based relative value scale, an RBRVS, and it's a Medicare payment system. And what it says is that this unit, we're going to say that in the region of Denver, Colorado, that the relative-based value, the resource-based relative value scale says that for phys routine physical exams in the Denver area, uh, Medicare will pay $122 for it. And that unit is multiplied by the geographic adjustment factor and a conversion factor applied for cost of living. And they come up with what this 
value of the physical exam will be. It differs from region to region. Now there are payment methods. There's allowed charges. Okay, we allow that charge, we'll pay for it. There's contracted fee schedule for that each of these payers, especially the private insurances, they will usually contract with a clinic or um, hospital for a two-year period and then renegotiate the contract. Then there is capitation per member per month. So let's say for your HMO Blue plan, you can only spend $500 a month, and we'll say $1,000 a month at the doctor's office. That's where preventive health care comes in. Because if we can prevent you and teach you how to be preventive and take care of your health, you won't have to come in all the time. Another example is someone who has asthma. We try to make sure you have all the medications you need. You're doing your exercise. You're staying away from um, conditions that would cause the asthma to become severe so that you're not in the office every week. It's called preventive health maintenance. And how do we calculate patient charges? We include your deductible, your co-payment, your co-insurance, and over-the-limit services. And we excluded or over-limit services. So if the charge is $100 and you do not have a deductible, you're okay. If you have a co-payment of $10, now your charges are $90. If you don't have a co-insurance, that's all right. But of the $90, how much of that is your HMO going to pay for? They're going to pay $70. All right. With the HMOs, we cannot balance bill you. All right, so if the service is charged at 90 and your HMO says we're going to pay 70, then that $20 is written off in the office. You don't get balance billed. You will get balance billed for uh, Medicare because Medicare only pays 80% of your Medicare Part B and your PPOs and HMOs. So once they've paid, there's a $20, there's a 20% amount due, and that's where your supplemental insurance or second insurance comes in, or you will pay the bill yourself. Now, communicate with patients about charges. Tell them what's expected. We have a thing called the Advanced Beneficiary Notice of Non-Coverage, and maybe you're going in for a procedure and your doctor needs to tell you Medicare does not cover this charge, so you will be required to pay the bill. Now, one of those things is cosmetic surgery. If you want to go in for a facelift or a tummy tuck, you will have to sign an advanced beneficiary notice of non-coverage because your Medicare is not going to pay for that. You're going to have to pay out of pocket. That's what that's all about. The claims process. This is how this worked. We need to obtain patient information, demographics, all right? We need to know the eligibility for services. We need to obtain prior authorization, and we need to coordinate your benefits, and this is called the birthday rule. Say you're married, and both of you carry health insurance. You have three children. So, you know, your son Tom is in the doctor's office because he was playing hockey and got, you know, um, hit in the side with a hockey puck and there's a big hematoma. So he goes into the doctor's office and they're checking it out to make sure nothing else is damaged. And you have x-rays and things and ultrasounds to make sure that no internal organs are damaged or your ribs aren't fractured. Well, Tom's mom and dad, has it, they both carry health insurance. So whose health insurance pays first? And who picks up any balances? This is the birthday rule. The parent or the person with the birthday first of the year, whoever has the birthday early in the year, um, will have those benefits paid out first. So if you're Tom and your mom's birthday's in March and your dad's birthday's in October, mom's insurance is being billed first. It's called the birthday rule. All right. If both of them have insurance on the same date, um, that on the same month, then it's by date of birth, I believe. All right. But the birthday rule is called the coordination of benefits for households that have more than one health insurance. The person with the first earliest birthday of the year is going to be the one whose benefits are billed first. And then the balances will be billed to the second person's insurance. Delivery services to patients. We have practitioner services. All right. So we're delivering services. Your doctor is seeing you today, checking on your medications. All right, that's a practitioner services. Medical coding, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But for anything that's done in a doctor's office, there's a diagnostic code. Okay, you have strep throat. There's a procedure code. We swabbed your throat and you were in the doctor's office for a visit. And then if you're on Medicare or Medicaid, there's these things called HCPCS codes, HCPCS codes, that pick up other supplies. So we have medical coding so that every person's using the same code for a sore throat. 
every person's using the same code for fractured knee. All right. And our referrals and authorizations may be needed for other services. And then the patient checks out. Now we're going to prepare and transmit the healthcare claim. An electronics claims transmission is mandated by um, HIPAA code A37BP, and this is mandated by Medicare, that all, elect that all healthcare claims are electronic and that you follow all the data elements for entry, that all the codes are used, all the correct codes are used for a everything. Now, paper claim completion is a CMS 1500, but as of 2016, Medicare and Medicaid said, we will not, we will not um, process paper claims. Everything has to be done electronically. Transmitting electronics claims um, are done directly. Now, most practices use a clearinghouse, and this is an in-between. So my claims for today are going to go to the clearinghouse. The clearinghouse is going to check all the demographics and make sure that all the codes that are used are validated by the doctor's soap note or cheddar note or POMR, that all the doctor's words validate the codes that are used. If everything is good and all the patient demographics information is good, we're going to send it right on to Blue Cross Blue Shield or Aetna, or United Healthcare, or Medicare, all right? And this is called generating a clean claim, all right? And uh, claim security, everything that goes is encrypted. So once it leaves the office, it doesn't look like Sarah Jane lives at 123 Main Street. It looks like who knows what because it's a mess. And once it gets to the clearinghouse and then to the insurance company, it's converted back to um, legible information. Insurer processing claims and payments. So once it's received at the insurance company, then they have a claims register, and this is done electronically, and they review the medical necessity. Again, did her ears need to be cleaned out? Doctor notes that there was loss of hearing in the left ear due to a large ear wax plug. Well, then we're going to pay for the ear lavage or the ear cleaning. And what are the allowable benefits? And this is all done in a computer, so it's done immediately. Payments and remittance advice. This is a repayment, a remittance advice, remittance advice explains what was paid. It's called the explanation of payment or a statement, if you will. And this goes to the doctor's office to say, Sarah Jane came in, you billed her for $100. The benefits say we can pay 90, so we're paying you 90 and 10% is left. And then your practice will write off the 10%. Now an explanation of benefits is sent to the patient. And a lot of times patients think this is a bill. So they send the bill, the payment to the doctor's office and the doctor sends the check back and says, this is an explanation of benefits, not a statement or an invoice for payment. All right. It used to be explanation of benefits was very tiny at the top of those forms that went out and everybody was sending money to the hospitals to pay their bills. When it got to be where finally all the companies put explanation of benefits, this is not a bill at the top page so people would know that, that it is exactly what it says an explanation of benefits. Now in the office, once we get the remittance advice and payment, we're going to look at it and apply it to the patient's account. And if it zeroes out the patient accounts and the claim is closed, if there's a balance and the patient has a second insurance as Medicare patients do, we'll bill the patient. And that is the end of insurance and billing.